Good morning, my brother. Good morning, my sister. We greet you in the everlasting and adorable name of Jesus, our Christ and our Lord, on this fourth day of April 2023. Right here is about 6 35 a.m. It's morning time as we get uh, today's priesthood of prayer underway. Uh, decidedly, it is Holy Week. It is time leading up to the seven last sayings of our Lord on the cross that um, provides a um, pre-setting of what we know as his death on the cross, his burial in the grave, but him being raised from the dead and making him, providing him, setting him in place as savior of the world but uh, preemptive of such a great release of God to provide through his own son, Jesus, the savior of the world. There are some attitudes um, referenced in the Holy Scripture leading up to the seven things he addressed on the cross of Calvary. I, my, um, my partner in this uh, glorious crime-solving uh, positioning, uh, Dr. Jeffrey V. Guns, uh, uh, we, we've been hooked up uh, in a um, prepared time by God. Uh, as I served in my second church at the Mount Lebanon Baptist Church, a friendship was developed because of uh, the relationship of the pastor of the Second Calvary Baptist Church, Dr. H. W. B. Walker, and my predecessor at uh, Mount Lebanon, uh, Dr. Frank Peter Wise, they had a series of services, like so many across the country, uh, leading up to the seven last sayings of our Lord. And uh, even now, uh, oh, my baby boy is one of the preachers. My oldest son, Ronnie, will be up in the um, sound room uh, and video room releasing the power of these seven sayings to those who virtually will be joining that service, um, giving sign and symbol to the efficacy of um, the seven sayings of our Lord from the cross that in a sense mirrors the times that we are passing through now a pandemic we are still walking within a pulling away uh, from the uh, authorship of God the creator of life and living I mean real life not, not not just church life but everything from the inception of time to the closure of time synchronizes itself in, in a kind of a holy hospitality that God seeks to bring us back into. For we have gone in our own ways trying to devise what we call life and living. Uh, but we've um, come to a point where we're killing one another. Uh, a subterfuge of undercutting uh, persons scrambling, trying to get to what they feel as though is the, uh, the time of life and living that uh, leaves to bear all consequences and uh, 
gives a crystallized and a concretized directive uh, of me trying to be who I'm supposed to be, you trying to be who you're trying to be, and we've, we've fallen short to why God sent his son into the world to give us the mandate, the mannerism, and the synchronization of who is really in charge. I'm speaking to you on this um, Tuesday now, a sequence of days that we pass through and call it a week's journey. But uh, what does a week look under the auspices of God? What, what, what do the seven last sayings of our Lord from the cross mean? in a day that we are passing through right now. Is there significance for the seven sayings of our Lord as he speaks from the cross? We are having service on this coming Friday. Pastor Guns and I, I guess we, we, we're more than 40 years now in having these services. And um, we seek to bring uh, 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 an understanding of the consequences of not following what the Lord has said and subsequently if we don't follow what he says we won't do what he says do and we we'll become um, outside persons of uh, this kingdom sway trying to make it uh, the best way we can and that's the substance of uh, why this devotional helps to, um, why I seek to help give, give some uh, clarification as to why such a time. Why, why, why do we take the time to remind you of um, those seven sayings and the seven things we would love to substitute for his sayings and keep on doing and saying what we want to do and say um, and that becomes the gospel and an individualistic kind of um, glory we bring upon ourselves instead of giving praise, honor, and glory to God for reminding us another year that he has given us who's really in charge and who really is the one we should allow to govern our lives. I'm going to take you right now into the 27th chapter of uh, Matthew and read a few verses there from verse 1 to verse 7 uh, and highlight uh, a setting that becomes uh, part of the uh, preamble of why us honoring God during this time of the year uh, is a great reminder as to how we ought to honor God all year long. Every, every breath he gives us to take, we must honor him. When the morning was come, all the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, which had betrayed him when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and brought again the 40 pieces, no, the 30 pieces pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, what is that to us? See thou to that. You take care of that. And he cast down the pieces of silver 
in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. So many are killing themselves today. And the chief priests took the silver pieces and said, it is not lawful for to put them into the treasury because it is the price of blood. And how much blood money, how much blood money is keeping us, keeping us from the fullness of life that is found in the one who gave his blood for us. The chief priest took the silver pieces and said it is not lawful but to put them into the treasury, I mean, into your income <laughs> that governs your life because it is the price of blood. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins where sinners can plunge beneath that flow and lose all their guilt as well as their shame. And they took counsel and brought with them the potter's field to bury strangers in. Wherefore, that field was called the field of blood unto this day. How much blood is in our streets? How much blood is in our communities? How much blood have been shed because we, not, we will not honor the one whose blood is able to make us whole, make us one, make us of his family. And our families will be able to benefit from this great investment of Jesus on the cross as well as the inheritance he promised to provide for us because we accepted him as Lord and as Savior. And they took counsel and brought with them the potter's field to bury strangers in. <laughs> One of the most uh, uh, announced provision during this season that we are passing through is uh, the provision of burial plots and uh, uh, burial money and uh, uh, how you can buy your policy to have make sure where you are buried <laughs> make sure you have a spot in the earth to be buried within Wherefore, the field is called the blood, the field of blood unto this day. Then I'll, 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 I'll read this ninth verse of the 27th chapter of Matthew and celebrate the Lord's Supper. In this morning's moment it says, Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, and they took the 30 pieces of silver, the price of him that was valued, whom they of the children of Israel did value, and gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord appointed me. And Jesus stood before the governor and the governor asked him saying art thou the king of the Jews and Jesus said unto him thou sayest and when he was accused of the chief priests and elders he answered nothing then said Pilate unto him, Hearest thou not how many things they witness against thee? And he answered to him, 
to never a word. And so much that the governor marveled greatly. Then finally, how at that feast the governor was wrought to release unto the people a prisoner whom they would and they had then a notable prisoner called Barabbas. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will ye that I release unto you, Barabbas or Jesus, which is called Christ? And he knew that for envy they had delivered him. When he was set down on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him saying, Have nothing to do with that J-U-S-T, that just man. Well, I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. Family, let's not make the wrong decision again. Let's make the right one. God sent his only begotten son to provide sanity for life and living. And as we follow the script of these in this 27th chapter of Matthew, we've made the wrong decision and been suffering ever since. I trust today you would make up in your mind, I'm going to follow Jesus. <laughs> one of the, one of the, one of the uh, saving elements um, was that he gave himself at the cross of Calvary. And when he did, he gave himself for you, your family. He gave himself for me and mine. And thus, we're here today seeking to bring light into the midst of darkness direction in the midst of persons who've decided to go their own way and since the decision has been made we've in a sense rolled down the eons of time it could be better it could be better and for those who have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and as their Savior it has become better we know in whom we believe and how he turns wrong into right. Make the decision. Take, eat. This is his body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of such a decision making time as indicated in our text today that will live within us until this Savior returns again. But before he returns this time, my God, my God, my God, what we are going through right now will multiply itself into the dominion of I should have made the right decision first, being part of the tapestry of our lifestyle. But let's get the antidote. Not only did he give his body at Calvary, but his blood. That same blood that's indicated here in this text. Consecrate us now to thy service, Lord, by thy power of life divine. And let our souls look up with a steadfast hope and our wills be lost. In thine. So now running through my veins 
and I trust you will allow such to happen with you. And running through my arteries is this cleansing additive, this empowering source of this Christ, this Jesus, that becomes the attitude changer for our time. If you haven't made the decision to follow him, do so. If you have, continue to do so. And re rededicate yourself to this channel of empowerment. To make you the kind of man you should be. Make you the kind of woman you should be. A God man. A God woman. That that synchronization will have him to release himself unto you and make you a man you never thought you could become make you the woman you thought you could not become change your thinking and present the family undergirding that you are helping to guide even now God creates families that honor him why not make the decision to honor him today I have some literature for you I want to give it to you I'm going to be posting my this video and 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 the subsequent highlight for staying strong in such a weak time Staying decisive in such a time where there's so many other portals you could pull from or enter into. But there's only one fountain filled with blood. And that is drawn from Emmanuel's veins where sinners plunge beneath that flow and lose all their guilt as well as all their shame. Make the decision to follow. God's Son, Jesus the Christ, for the rest of your life. And the rest of your life you will find the rest he has promised. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your soul. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Honor him today. I'm talking to persons who want the best in life. Honor him today and watch the substance of things hoped for becomes the evidence of things you have not seen. <laughs> A better you can emerge from this decision you make today for him. Blessings be upon you. I'll see you tomorrow. I'm walking on that path of righteousness for his name's sake, leading up to Calvary and beyond. Until tomorrow, may the love of God be yours.